Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackier.com. Today we're going to break down the all new Foresight Mark 1S Smart Helmet. Yeah, you heard that right. Smart Helmet from Foresight. This is all new to the US market. It's an Australian company, they've got European distribution, and they've now made their way to the United States. The retail on this helmet is $1,099, which given everything it includes, is pretty reasonable. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down. I'm gonna talk about sizing, how it fit, how it felt, who I think it's right for, the features, the benefits. This is not a helmet that I have had the opportunity to ride in. As of right now, I'm not 100% sure that I plan to ride in this one. This is more, I would see it as more of a street helmet at this point than I see it as a racetrack helmet. Things that it includes, and this is, this is pretty cool stuff, man. It includes a Sony 1080p action cam. It's built right into the chin bar of the helmet. There are LEDs in the breath deflector that are able to illuminate and signal you of different road hazards or even sync up with the navigation. Foresight has developed their own app. In the background, it's using, I believe, Google Maps as well as Waze here in the US to give you all of the different updates, heads up display essentially while you're riding, okay? What can it alert you of, you ask? When you're running the navigation, it can flash on the left side, signaling turn left, flash on the right, signaling turn right. Speed camera, road hazard ahead, traffic jam ahead. It'll let you know when your recording has started and or stopped, if it's still recording, and then even a police alert. A lot of that, that data is gonna come straight from Waze, so that's kind of you know user uploaded, right? You're, somebody's using Waze driving in their car, they see a police, they go ahead and report that, and then it goes throughout the system, okay? That's pretty cool stuff, and that's stuff that we have not seen yet. More importantly, they brought it to market in what I would say is a good helmet. I've had the helmet on, I've worn it quite a bit here in the shop. I've compared this to you know, the other hundreds of helmets that I've worn and reviewed over the years, and I think it's very well executed. We're gonna compare it to the helmet I'm riding in right now. This is Shoei X15. The majority of the riding I do, pretty much all of the riding I do now is on the racetrack. Shoei is my preferred brand. Yeah, there's a lot of good helmets out there, but when it comes to fit, finish, and quality, Shoei's 10 out of 10, okay? When I look at the Foresight helmet, I take it apart, I put it all back together, a good from the inside out look, giving this X15 a straight 10 on build quality, right, fit and finish. I am gonna give this one, I'm gonna give it a high seven, right? It's not quite an eight, it's pretty darn close. Very, very well executed. And when you consider all the things that they've integrated into it, right? It's a lot different than this X-15. This X-15 is a, a racing helmet, right? It's meant for high speed operation. This is a helmet that it has a built-in camera. It's got Harman Kardon Bluetooth speakers built into the helmet. They've developed their own application that helps you with navigation, audio, and video recording. So when I look at these two things, they're not both just helmets. This one is much more than that. And there's other areas where it differs besides just that overall build quality. And please understand too, when I give something like a high seven, almost an eight, it's an excellent product. They've done a fine job. You strip the camera and the speakers and the LED display out of it, you have yourself an excellent helmet and it would probably sell for a lot less considering you've removed all that technology. When you look at overall value, if you're a street rider who likes to ride with a camera, maybe you like to do some vlogging, this helmet is really suited for the type of riding that you're doing. 
There's a microphone built into the camera. You're able to talk while you're filming. I've watched some reviews of people who have shot videos and some videos are uploaded using this helmet and they turned out great. They sounded great. Reading the reviews of the helmet on the Foresight website, I went to the Australian website and there's a lot of reviews there. It's an Australian company that probably moved a lot of helmets there. Like anything of this nature that's a real technical product, what I found was kind of a mixed bag with the reviews, with the majority of them, I felt, being people that were really excited about the product and have had a good experience with it. Who is this right for? Like I alluded to a little bit earlier, this is going to be driven towards a street rider who is interested in streaming music, right, using navigation, and of course, video stuff. If you're a vlogger, this helmet is probably a great option for you. It's going to make your life a lot easier. It's got very reasonable battery life for, I think, up to like three hours video capturing, right, using the speaker somewhere in that three-hour neighborhood. So that's plenty of time. The SD card is stored right here in the chin bar. I mean, this is literally all integrated into this helmet. Let's talk a couple of just quick specs. Full carbon fiber shell. They leverage that to keep this thing a little bit lighter than it would normally be because remember, you've integrated, the speakers are already in it, the camera's already on it. On our digital shipping scale in a size medium, I got 3.8 pounds for the Foresight, as you see it here. I weighed my Shoei X15 one more time. Remember, no camera, no speakers. 3.65 pounds. The difference between the two, I don't even think you're going to notice it weight-wise when you're riding. It is so close. When you have this in your hands, you, you can kind of feel there is a little bit more weight concentrated here in the chin bar area. Wearing it in the shop for probably about an hour at my desk, I like to really give a helmet an opportunity to see how it's going to, how it's going to fit, how it's going to feel. I wouldn't say that I noticed any excessive weight in that area, so I feel like that's not anything to be concerned about at all. Let's talk about head shape. This is an intermediate oval shaped helmet. If anything, you know, it It might be just a, just comparing it to the showy, it might be just a, a touch shorter front to back and a touch wider side to side. It's not a massive difference but it's a slight difference and it's one that I certainly noticed. For most riders, that's not going to be a problem. If your head leans towards more of a long oval, right? Like you've typically over the years had a difficult time getting a helmet that has a good fit front to back without having pressure, this one may not be the best option for you. Once again, if you're interested in it, you order it, leave all, you know, keep all the tags, the bags, the boxes, all the stuff, right? Don't go out and ride in it, wear it in the house to make sure you're happy with the fit before you go out. And you can be the one to determine for yourself if that's gonna work for you. Certification. This helmet, the one for the US market, is DOT certified only. The European helmets, are ECE certified, right? But for the US market, this helmet got changed a little bit and they did not subject it to the testing, which it passed in Europe, it's gonna pass here. There are some differences with this helmet compared to the European model, which I feel personally, you're getting a better helmet here. If you've watched my helmet videos, you're gonna know, I'm not the biggest fan of drop down inner shields. There's a couple of things they do to the helmet that I personally don't really like. One of which being it's thicker in the brow, so when you get into more of a sporty riding position, a tuck, they're a little thicker there and it can close off your field of vision, right, while in a tuck. The US model does not have the drop down inner screen. So you lose that extra thickness in that area and you also lose like that void because what you're gonna have with a drop down inner is you're gonna have shell, and then you're going to have a void where the drop-down inner screen rides, and then you're going to have the drop-down inner, then the EPS. I'm not an engineer, but my personal thoughts are that you pick up a higher level of protection 
when you have the shell right up against the EPS. So if you find yourself in an accident, right, you're taking an impact, the shell begins working immediately against the EPS. And I just personally feel like that's the best possible scenario for protecting the rider. So slightly biased there, the majority of the riding that I do is on the racetrack. Let's talk about ventilation. Large, and I pulled it apart and looked at it, and we'll show you in the second part of this video, there's large intake vents. They're switchable here, right here on the brow. You want to bring a lot of air into a helmet. You really need to have these vents right up here on the brow. It's one of the most effective ways to, to do it because it drags that air all the way over the top of the, of the crown, right? Super important. When you have that drop down inner screen, you typically lose these vents every time. So you lose a lot of ventilation on the helmet. There's also intake vents here in the chin. The switches for these are on the inside of the chin bar. We'll show you that when we do the second part of this video. Exhaust vents come here to the back. There's an integrated diffuser. They have like a little tiny little arrow wing here too. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool, sure. Like a little Porsche going down the road, your flap comes up. What is that really gonna do, right? I don't know, but it's kind of cool. Other features and benefits and things included. This helmet here in the U.S. ships with pinlock resistant lens, max vision, installs right in the clear shield. There are tinted shields that are on the way to the U.S. right now. They will have a dark smoke and they will also have an iridium mirror to complement the clear helmet that comes with the shield. If you want to add those on, there's going to be somewhere in that $70 neighborhood, which is a generic price for shield. In terms of fog-free performance, Pinlock is the absolute benchmark. That stuff, the product works great. The Max Vision, there's very little obstruction, if any. So if you want fog-free performance, the package that you get right from Jump Street is going to be excellent here in the U.S. The visor mechanism, there is a lock on either side. I think that might mark the first time that I've seen that. Up is unlocked all the way down is locked. If you like to ride with your shield cracked, let's get you up to your, your first detent, which is right about there, okay? Really no reason to ride with a shield cracked with the amount of air this helmet's capable of moving in and out and also having a fog-free insert. The visor pivot, um, it gets the job done. You know, it, is it the same level of engineering that we're gonna find with a showy? Probably not. But nonetheless, it gets the job done. You pull out on the trigger right here, okay? I'm sorry, I should say pull down on the trigger and then kind of pull out on the helmet shield like so. Off it comes. Give you a look at the helmet without it. This helmet comes with a premium interior here in the US. There's no optional interior like it looks like there was over in Europe. So. This one comes right out of the gate with the good stuff. One of the first things you'll notice with this, it does come with this chin curtain installed. I removed it to show you that it is in fact removable. You see when that's held in place here, it really seals this helmet up quite a bit around the neck roll. Also the padding around the neck roll is all one piece and it, it's a little bit to the thick side. I found that the on off effort with this helmet, right, is, it definitely takes some effort to put it on and a little bit of effort to pull it off. Once you have it on, it feels very comfortable and very captured. I measure 58 centimeters on the money. This helmet's a medium. I got exactly the fit that I would look for from any helmet. I really enjoyed the fit. And the longer I wore it at my desk, the better it felt. Glasses compatibility for this helmet is excellent. They slide right in and you're able to hold them in the position that you prefer with ease. One of the biggest mistakes that we see people make, and some of the reviews that I saw over on the Australian site indicated to me that maybe these people have made said mistake, is people buying a helmet that's at least one size bigger than what they really need. You should always use the sizing chart and compare that to the measurement that you've taken of yourself before you just go out and go, I'm a large, I'm an extra large, you don't know what you are if you've not taken a measurement, right? If you find yourself deviating heavily from the size chart, 
odds are you're buying a helmet that's going to be too big for you. What's the issue with buying a helmet that's too large? Issue number one is it's not able to do its primary job, which is protect you in the event of a fall, as well as it will if it fits correctly. If the helmet's too big, it can move around. That can actually allow your head to accelerate, right, in the event of a crash, right? Kind of like a, you know, you impact and then you got this big void and then another impact. The other thing it can do is it could allow the helmet to actually roll off, right? A roll off is, is one of the worst things that could ever happen. So it's key that the helmet fits right. So safety aspect, performance and riding experience. Those are huge. You spend a lot of time in this thing. If you want your helmet to be as quiet as it possibly can be, it needs to fit correctly. When the helmet fits your head correctly and it really has you captured, it's gonna seal up really well in this area here, right, in the neck, and if you keep the chin curtain in, the entire helmet is going to seal up very well. It allows the ventilation to do its job. Speaking of ventilation, I forgot to include the two extractor vents here, and we spoke about ventilation earlier in the video. You want it to be quiet, it has to fit right. When you have your helmet on, you should notice a little bit of pressure, but no actual physical pain. It's also very important to note that from when a helmet is brand new to the point where you've ridden in it a fair amount, there is definitely a change in the way the helmet will fit. It's going to break in and conform to your head. One thing I like to recommend to people, especially people that have invested serious money in a helmet like you would this, when you get it and you've ridden in it and it's feeling great, you don't ever let anyone try your helmet on, right? There's foam EPS inside of there that actually conforms to your head to some degree over time and use. You let somebody who's got an extra large size head try on your medium helmet, when you get it back, there is a significant possibility that it's not going to feel the way it felt before you let them try it on. Other features and benefits and things that are included. Once again, this is, I'm not gonna, I'm not riding this right now, we're not shooting video with it, right? Not listen to the speakers. This is the control panel that mounts to your handlebars. They include all the pieces necessary to get these on standard size handlebars. There's two different size inserts here. They include an Allen wrench to tighten this up. You have controls for navigation, video, able to accept phone calls. These are all the things that this unit is able to do. One thing this is not able to do is it's not able to pair with other helmets. This is not your standard style communicator where you can pair it up with all the other people in your riding group. This is able to record video as well as audio, help you with navigation and warnings on the road as you're traveling, right, while streaming music, but not able to communicate with other helmets. It also ships with some additional spacers for the speakers. If you find them not to be in the appropriate position for the shape of your head and or your ears, you're able to get in here and space those out a little bit, right? To get it so it's most appropriate for you. Comes with all the cabling that you're gonna need for video transfer and charging. Believe it or not, you don't see this very often anymore. It actually even includes the charging block that nobody seems to include with their products anymore because I think everyone expects that you already have 20 charging blocks at home from all the other products that you've purchased over the years. So it ships complete with the exception of the SD card. You will need to pick up an SD card. It claims that it can take one up to one full terabyte in size. All those specs are going to be included in the secret document that is shipping with this helmet, okay? Feel like we pretty much covered the features, the benefits, the fit, the weight, the nuts and the bolts of it. If you wanna see what it looks like from the inside out, stay tuned. Shield removal and reinstallation. Begin by removing it all the way. Obviously, you wanna make sure the shield locks on both sides are completely disengaged. To remove the shield, go ahead and grab a hold of the release trigger here, pull forward, 
grab the shield down here and rotate out and up. Come over to the other side. It's a simply a mirror image. Even a little easier once you have one side removed. To reinstall the shield, there is a locator tab. A little hard to see on a clear shield, but we'll do the best we can here on the top. And then there is one that is going to lock into the shield release trigger here on the bottom. To reinstall it, you want to simulate the upward position. Once again, making sure the shield locks are, are both disengaged. Let's get that upward most tab into position and then push in. Same process here on the other side. Try and get that other tab, just that upward tab to dip in a little bit. Push in, release the trigger. Push down. Before you ride in it, you want to actuate it a couple of times and make sure that you've got it fully on both sides. To remove the interior, we're going to go ahead and pull the helmet shield off. The chin curtain itself is very simply held in by pressure from the outer shell against the EPS. These tabs just slide right into position. They hold it in very easily. There's even arrows here. That one's very, very simple. The cheek pads and the neck roll are one piece. On the foresight, there are four snaps that are holding the cheek pad against the shell of the helmet. You want to slide your fingers in between the EPS and the backing of the cheek pad to release each one of those snaps. Do the same on both sides. These are also emergency release cheek pads. Okay, so in the event uh, of an accident, they're able to grab this whole padding system and just pull on it, it will all release and come right out the bottom. Once you have all the snaps disengaged, go ahead and grab a hold of the cheek pad like so. I want you to pull outward and then kind of rotate around like so. Here's your cheek pad and neck roll system. To remove the top pad, you'll see that kind of already slid out a little bit. The top pad is held in partially by pressure from the neck roll tabs here on the back. Slide that out like so. And then we're going to come up to the front of the helmet up here in the brow. There are release tabs here, 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 and here. You want to kind of get your thumbnail, if you can, underneath it. Pull up on the tab to release it. it should take very little pressure to pull that out once you have released the tab. Here is your top pad. You can see that there's holes that line up with the super effective vents right here in the brow. Really important. The quality of the liner looks very good. Like I said, I give the overall quality of the helmet a very high seven. Now let's have a look at the inside. Here is your on off button up here in the front of the chin bar. Your switchable vents are right here. These vents allow direct air to flow right into the chin area on both sides. You can see your Harman Kardon speakers. They're held in by Velcro. You'll see the wiring is in here is all very tidy and out of the way. The integration is excellent. You can see the channeling in the EPS to help maximize the ventilation. And if you look at the front of the helmet in the brow, you can see that holes there for those vents are just massive. And that is just a phenomenal way to get airflow into the helmet itself. All in all, what do I think? I think as the next few seasons come upon us, we're going to see more and more smart helmets. I've already seen some products like this. They just weren't good enough for us to even really consider offering because the helmet, in a couple of the situations, the helmet itself was just shit. 
this is a good helmet. They've done a really good job, and they've also done an excellent job integrating technology into the helmet that I feel is going to be very useful for riders that are interested in that. If you're interested in just racing, right, you're probably going to be better served picking yourself up a Shoei X-15 that sells for pretty much the same money as this than you would this helmet. I talked to the people that are involved with Foresight USA at length about bringing this product on, getting more information before we reviewed it today, kind of giving you this overview. And at some point, I, I'm going to try to get out there and use this a little bit more and offer some more feedback, right? The, this is going to be around for a long time. There's going to be further improvements, further integrations. And it's a pretty exciting time because now we're coming from just helmets where you're like putting a universal communicator on it and maybe you're hanging a GoPro off the chin, which is just shabby compared to this. I mean, this is fully integrated and totally badass all in one package. It's only going to get better from here. With that said, this initial offering here in the U.S. is an excellent package. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm always here to help you choose the right gear for your next ride.